G'day to you. You're probably watching this um, live session of a lunch and learn that was recorded live and you're now watching a replay. So I just want you to type in the number two. Today we're basically going to be talking about how you can launch a product or a business, um, you know, utilizing whatever you already have. And I see the lunch uh, and learn section has just started. I'm going to segue to that um, part of it. Good day, tough. How's it going, my man? Thanks for the call earlier on. And Luke Moroni, hope you enjoyed the rest of your weekend, my man. I see Luke Corin is in the house as well. Long time no speaky, my friend. I hope everything is well with you there. Today we're basically talking about, um, you know, how to launch either a brand or how to launch a business, especially right about now, um, you know, when maybe it's the beginning of the year, you want to start a new business or you have started a new business or you are starting a new product just like we have just done. So I'm going to be giving you a case study of how we've managed to launch Australian Business Online Directory. Not exactly launch, but, you know, the stages that we've taken in order to make this and now popular 4,500 um, you know, uh, supporter strong and member strong platform that we're going to be unleashing onto the Australian online business market. I see uh, Luke says supporting the supporters. Absolutely. And if you really want to see where that trick works, if you press, I think it's either there or either there. There's, um, there's a button that allows you to flick this video onto a big screen, experience, um, you know, the magnificence of what you're about to experience right about now. My name is Prosper Tarubinga for those that are just watching this video for the first time. And while you're getting ready, those that are well acquainted, please type in where you are checking in from. It just helps us to know, um, you know, how large this audience really is becoming and who exactly is paying attention to what we've got to say. Uh, mainly, I work with small businesses so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. The reason why I do this is because I'm a small business owner myself and I actually enjoy working with people that are passionate about, you know, you know, looking after their families that are passionate about growing a business from scratch that they have instigated themselves. I see there's a lot of Melbourne people. North Carolina, that's Nicole. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Still, it is weekend, um, you know, if you ask me from um, from this end. So for those that are within Australia, within Melbourne, you would have noticed I've been posting a lot lately about a new platform, uh, the Australian Business Online Directory, which is basically a platform for small businesses like yourself, um, you know, so that you can connect with other businesses so that you can actually get, um, you know, reviews from your clients, considering that Facebook has made it so difficult, um, you know, for you to reach your audience. You are now going to be finding Australian businesses and it's going to be easy for you to be found. Um, when people are searching on this directory and then they can instantly connect with you and you know if you're offering services within a certain area or within a certain uh, demography it's a good time to start right now when there's not a lot of people that are in um, you know your area that might be taking business away from you so the directory really works as a powerful tool to attract um, you know more clients to you and you, you don't really have to puff up your chest anymore to look big or established we're going to be, um, you know, helping you get seen and be visible where your clients are actually searching. So the directory is just designed to do all the heavy lifting for a small business so that you can actually concentrate on doing what you know best, which is providing your service. All right. So, you know, right now you might be going into year number two of your business or you might be in year one or day one depending on where exactly, um, you know, you might be at, at the moment. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things that you have to do prior to launching a business or a new brand, you know, because right now, picture this, your clients, if you're not on the scene, they're already buying from somebody, they're already consuming content from somebody, they are already, um, you know, being created for and related to by someone who, um, you know, was in business prior to you. So how are you going to get their attention? How are you going to get their trust? How are they going to know who you are? How are they going to start transacting with you? This is what a lot of people might have, um, you know, a problem going through or actually, um, you know, doing within their businesses. All right. So have you heard, have people heard about your company? 
And are they exactly going to be excited about it? And do they think it's going to be amazing? All of this has to be built into the framework of how you create your product or how you create your, 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 your business. First of all, there's three things that you really got to realize when you're starting off a business or a product. You got to have a message. And that message has to be going to a market. And you got to have a way or a platform or a, 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 a means of reaching to that um, you know, audience with a, that message. All right. So you can build your platform. You have to build an audience for that platform and your business has to be grown and, um, you know, expanded using content marketing because people are coming to the Internet to get information. All right. So if you are doing any of those things, then you are on your way to actually succeeding. All right. So let's just say maybe um, you've been preparing for months, which is what we did. Uh, we were preparing behind the scenes, really trying to figure out how can we best, um, you know, harness all this traction, all this attention that we're getting off of Facebook. How can we actually own it and make it ours in order to be very helpful? Because right now, as you would know, Facebook has limited the reach of Facebook pages. So if your business is really relying on utilizing Facebook, um, you know, as a means to reach to your audience, you now have to pay to play. So not a lot of small businesses have that kind of disposable income, um, you know, to, to, to be paying with the hope that somebody might see their content. So that's why the Australian Business Online Directory is going to be that cushion so that they don't have to huff and puff in order to blow down their little piggies' homes, but they can actually use a well-established audience, a well-established, um, you know, um, platform, I mean, not well-established platform, but soon to be well-established platform that they can piggyback on in order to reach an audience that's already searching for their services anyway. Let's face it, people on Facebook were never buying stuff anyway. That's the honest truth. People are coming to Facebook to check out what Aunt Sally is doing, to check out what Uncle Robert got uh, up to over the weekend, or to see how many cats are now famous on Facebook, you know? Nobody's coming to buy your, you know, your, your coaching program. Nobody's coming to buy your accounting, um, you know, program. Nobody's really coming to buy anything up until you've earned the permission from them to actually sell to them, all right? So if you're going to be getting anything from this video today, if you're going to be creating a product, create it so that it is an asset that allows you to get permission from your audience to sell to them. I know as business people, we always think, oh, you know what? I don't need permission from anyone. I don't need, you know, to ask anyone's permission to, to be, do, and have maybe a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But you're going to need my permission to get into my inbox. You're going to need my permission for me to give you attention. All right. So no matter how you might think that, you know, you build it and they will come. It's no longer like that. Anyone with a track pants, anyone with a laptop or a phone just like this right now can actually create a business and people will be paying attention to him. So maybe your business has been in, in, you know, in, in, in functioning for the past two years. Every time we start a new year, it's, 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 you, you have to really start and really check to see if your audience is still your audience. Because whenever your audience is on a social media platform, that is borrowed audience. You need to move them either through some sort of mailing system or some sort of platform or blogging or content, um, you know, strategy in order to own them, so to speak. All right. So chances are you might be getting extremely nervous about, you know, whether your startup is going to be successful or not. Or, you know, obviously we always tell each other to be positive and stuff like that, but there's so much that you need to do behind the scenes in order to be heard, in order for people to pay attention to you, all right? You might have the most groundbreaking product or service in history, um, you know, but without building any sort of anticipation or any sort of um, attraction to that audience or to that uh, particular, you know, service or, or, or goods, especially months leading to the launch, your business is going to fall flat and right out of the gate. Grand opening, grand closing. All right. Um, and this is, this is actually a, a true fact. It's not, it's not something that I'm making up right now. Um, nearly 75% of startups actually do fail within the first three years. The reason is because they would have had so much, so much of a tremendous idea 
but that idea did not have any uptake. If you don't have people purchasing, um, you know, your, your, your services or your product, if you don't have people that are willing and able to buy your idea, you know, it's not going to happen. All right. So there's this statement, prior pr planning prevents poor performance. So this is what this video is all going to be about. I'm going to be telling you some of the steps that we took in order to now have almost 4,500 people joined up to our platform in less than three weeks of launching we haven't even launched yet so this is actually really really exciting um you know the the, the numbers that we've managed to uh um you know uh, to ghana so far and this applies directly to any sort of startup to any sort of um you know business that you might be looking to to to, to start off with there needs to be an established audience there needs to be a, an established presence that can build up the excitement, that can build up, you know, the momentum before you launch your product to people that don't even care about what you've got to say, all right? So I managed to document some of the processes that we did to ensure that our business had a strong start um, in the beginning of 2018. I'll give you this example. I always give this example to people that quite know who I am. Let's say the rest of your hand or the rest of your palm is your product, all right, or your service. The people that are right about here, all right, this first, um, you know, tire of your little finger here, these are the people that are closest to you, these are the people that have heard about you, these are the people that quite know who you are, and they tolerate whatever message or whatever product you might have, all right? You then have the second bit of people, this is the mass market, all right? These are your early adopters. Now, the mass market is where the money is at, but for you to get from your product to the mass market, you're going to have to go through your early adopters. Now, what have you done to prime these early adopters? What have you done to notify them and to have them as influencers so that they can, you know, go in and tell their friends, their relatives, um, you know, their co-workers, etc., etc. Now, this last bit, this is everybody else. These are the laggards. These are the people... They don't even care you exist. These are the people that only want to see the product working. They don't care what you went through. If they just look at your product, if it doesn't work, they're already going in and you've lost that person already. But you know what us people and us business people want to do right from the get-go? We want to reach out to the laggards before we've even gotten influencers and before we've even gone into the mass market. All right. So a lot of people get it wrong there because they're already looking at getting 10,000 people to utilize their product or 10,000 people to sign up to whatever app they would have created. And guess what? Nobody cares about your success except for you. So this is how you make it solid. This is how you make it strong. Make sure your early adopters are well looked after. It doesn't matter. Maybe you, you have to go through having to I don't know what you have to do to get these people to get you across to this section of the market, which is the mass market, all right? So the tricks and trips that I'm going to be giving you in this video are to do with this whole um, scenario where you have your product and you have to go through these three different stages for your product to actually stick. And that's the reason why a lot of businesses fail because they don't go through all of those, um, you know, processes in order for their business to become a thing. All right. First of all, you need to explain how your product or service is going to change people's lives. All right. How is your product or the service that you're launching or the business that you're going to launch going to change people's lives? People are already busy trying to learn new things and we all know a lot of people and a lot of our customers hate change. What you're asking them to do is to adopt new habits. You're asking them to adopt new philosophies. You are actually telling them that they were wrong all along. You're actually insulting them by bringing in a better product because what they've been using is bullcrap all this time. So you're insulting their intelligence. So you really have to make sure you tread this carefully because nobody wants to be proven wrong. Can you imagine we've been using taxis all this time and somebody just comes up with Uber and tells them that for the last hundred years, you guys have been wasting your time. You just need to tap onto this app and get an Uber. 
Can you imagine how much that insults the people that already invested in buying the cars, painting the, 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 the Texas yellow or white or black? So you're insulting people's intelligence by bringing in a new product. So you have to tread carefully. All right. Every time something new comes in, you are definitely telling them what you've been doing in the past is bullcrap. So you want to think back to the reason why you actually started your business. You know, why does this, why does it make your idea very innovative? Because people can see it past five years and they would now start counting the cost of saying, if I leave what I was doing, what is the opportunity cost of me going and starting on, on a new platform? Can you imagine right about now, what I'm trying to create is a platform that people have to input their details. It's something new. They have to reintroduce themselves. They'd rather stick with Facebook. You know why? Because it's easier. They've already put their content on there. And, you know, it, 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 it just has been. Nobody knows what Australian Business Online Directory is. So I have to move in with the first early adopters. And then once they understand it and they have their own worldview, it's easier for them to word of mouth the platform to other people. So whatever product you introduce into the market, make sure you already have early adopters. It could be your granny. It could be your auntie. And if she speaks about you at bingo or Uncle Sam talks about you at a barbecue, all of those things would help. Because people don't want to be proven wrong. People don't want you to show them that they could have been doing better all this time. So what makes your idea innovative? And when you begin to lay the framework of promoting this new business, you know, the, 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 the beginning of the advertising has to be a clear cut way of showing how you exactly plan to change the status quo. Because what you're doing is you are disrupting or you are changing how people were used to doing things. And you know how long it takes to change a habit. 21 days, 28 days. All right. So you really, really want to make sure that you're generating proper interest, first of all, by your early adopters. And get the market buzzing about your startup or your product before you even want to launch it to the mass market. You want to make sure you are, you are taking note of what your, your target market is actually responding to at the moment, what their current mindset is, and what would you like it to be after they have dealt with your business. That's when you know you will go past the three-year mark. Do you know what I mean? Because right now everybody's bloated with information. Everybody's bloated with people that are just starting off false starts, one click wonders. So they are going to be trading carefully if you're starting something new. There's already established things that we, they were doing before. So you have to literally explain to them, debunk to them that what they're doing is going to be the best decision they've done to themselves, you know, you know, in a very long time. So how do you then get to this level of understanding your audience? Guess what I did the whole of last year? I came out and I gave content for free. I interacted. I joined many groups. I interviewed a lot of people. I think about 400 people while I was discovering how to, you know, launch this product. You know, I, 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 I put in the work. Every video that I was putting out there and interacting with people, I realized that people are connected, but they really lack the connection that a platform like, you know, Abbott is going to bring, you know? So at the end of the day, put in the work to discover or design a product that is already needed on the market. And guess what? The response that we're getting about our boat, everybody's just like, oh my God, this looks promising. Oh my God, this is something that's going to be great. You know what? I've been amongst the people. I've been amongst the small businesses figuring out where is the missing link? What are they missing from what's already there on the market? And if you would notice, my biggest sort of competition right now is probably going to be somebody like Yellow Pages or somebody like... Um, you know, your, your local directory, what they have is just a list of businesses. They're not putting in content for people. They're not connecting the, 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 the business person to the actual customer. 
and they're not profiling the business person because right now people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Look at how Facebook is becoming popular because somebody can actually see who you are before they interact with you. Now, with uh, with Yellow Pages, you don't know what to expect and up until you've ranked that company. I studied that. I went in, I dug in all that information, and while I was interviewing people, I figured out people really need to be connected. So what does Upboard do? It connects the disconnected. And when you pinpoint the interest of your target market, you already know their needs before they ask. Now, is your product serving that actual need, or is it actually serving a purpose that is needed in the marketplace? You know, so, you know, we just finished creating this thing and we had to start right from the basics, product creation, fact finding, all of those things. And when you now know your target audience, you create something for them, not creating a product and searching for an audience for it already, because then that will make it hard and uh, for, for the uptake. And that's why after three years, you will give up. So when you already know your target audience and everything about them, you already know their worldview. And, 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 and that then becomes the key to running a successful business. You know, so you, you get educated on the market. You can now start telling what tools are they actually using at the moment that are making the biggest impact, break those tools and see how you can make them better if you cannot move on to the next thing. So whatever it is that you're doing, create an audience and start creating products for them. Don't create products and start searching for an audience for that because people would help, you know, people would support a city or a wall that they helped to build. All right, so you want to be educated on, on your market and you can actually tell who are the, 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 the biggest players in that market, what sort of media channels are they receptive to, and once you already know that you're already part of them, you're not like an, uh, you're not like, you know, an outsider who's coming to, you know, to, to claim territory in a place that nobody actually knows of your existence. And that's why it takes a while for people to absorb who you are, absorb what you can do, and absorb your brand. You know? So you want to figure out what type of media channels is your target market really, really receptive to. And once you've determined that, create your brand's personality to fill, to, to, to actually, um, you know, to, 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 to feed that mold. And you start speaking the same language as the people, or you give them a language to speak. Hello, having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. It's become the thing, you know? And that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants profit in their business. Everybody wants to enjoy working within that business. You know why? Because they don't want to be answering to any, um, you know, bosses. And that's the reason why they left their corporate job in the first place. So you want to make sure the person who's going to be representing your brand is the, 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 the real epitome of what your audience is really searching for. What are they going to be like? Who are they? What do they represent? What are their values? You know? And what do they actually stand for? Because if you don't stand for anything, you can fall for anything. And the one thing that you really got to do is, is your brand person or the brand leader relatable. Because if, you, if your brand personality is going to be this high charlatan that people cannot even relate to, it's going to be hard for people to uptake your brand. So you want to have a really, really firm understanding of what your target market's interests are, what makes them tick. And then you can position your brand accordingly and you will actually get customers that don't realize that they're going to buy from you. You know why? Because they already like who you are. People buy from those that they know, like, and trust. So you want to create that foundation right from the get-go. Because you only get that one opportunity to make a lasting first impression. You never get a second chance to make a second impression. You know? And once you already know what your target audience is listening to, what they're watching, who they, um, you know, uh, who they follow at the moment, you want to find the right influencers. 
give them a voice. Ask their opinions. Because these are the people that your target audience is already respecting right now. So it's easier for them to influence the rest of the, the you know, these, um, you know, the, the, the rest of the market. Because they already known, they already trusted. So all you're doing is just borrowing their audience. And once you've successfully pinpointed who this um, you know, influencers are and, and what their interests are and what markets they represent, really, the challenge is to start reaching out to them at a level that is to actually engage, not just to want to gain from them because you're not the first person to reach out to them. So you go in and offer them value. So figure out what your business or what your personality can be of value so that you tap into their audiences. They're not going to allow you to just go in and, 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 and mess up what they've built up along the years. So this, this is not just a matter of, yes, we've launched a product. No, it's stage after stage and making sure that you're actually grooming your audience and your customers so that when the time comes for you to start selling, they already know that it's it's time. And you know what? People like buying stuff. They don't particularly like being sold to. So when you've created that community around yourself, then start creating products for them. It's not the other way around. You know? Get the opinions of the people that are already in the industry, the, the, the industry leaders, the influencers, because they are already on top. They already have a pulse of what, you, you know, the, 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 your target audience is after. Because these influencers and these, um, you know, market leaders, they, they have the ability to make a profound impact on your behalf. Because people don't quite know you yet, but they already know some players within the industry. So perception matters. If you are seen around with these people, it, they're authority rubs off off of you and then you get the perception of being well known so these influencers can be people like bloggers uh, politicians educators uh, journalists or even some of the other business owners that are already selling the same product because according to what we're creating here and what you're going to be creating in the future there is no competition there is no competition. I mean, competition is there for the figurative speech of it, but no one has the same mentality, same mindset, and no one has the same way of delivering a product. So once you get these influencers, even if you're in the same niche as, as them, get them on board, get them on your side early, and you know it would do wonders in, in them bringing your, their own audiences to you. And they'll be excited to see your new innovation and idea take shape. Because like I said earlier on, people will always support a wall that they helped to build. You know? Yes, and what I dare say is don't, don't compete, create. Absolutely. Like if you can look at, at, at my fingers here, no fingers are of the same height. So even if you're producing the same product, you would have a different way of reaching to your audiences. So there's never competition. And some people might like your values more than my values. It's, it's always going to be like that. You know? And once you've got the products going, once you've got everything, um, you know, shooting, launch. Just put it out there. Some people get paralyzed by all of this and they never launch. You know, all of this work could just be an idea that if we didn't launch, then it would have just been a high sounding nothing. Ship it. Make people, you know, use it. Let them break it. Don't try and leave it up until it's perfect because perfection kills productivity. You're not your end user. So let the end user use the product and start, um, you know, what do you call it? And start breaking the, 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 the platform or the product. Constantly be getting, um, you know, feedback. Track and analyze everything. Because business results are becoming more and more data driven. So you want to track, you know, the critical data that, that, that makes you realize what time do people come on your platform. 
and maximize all of those um, you know, online efforts because what doesn't get measured doesn't grow. All right? So once you've got all that information, you've got all that data, you've launched, analyze what's working and what can be optimized. Take away what's not needed because what you have is just a big boulder of a stone. And when you launch it, all you're doing is take away, taking away the, the parts that are not working. And then eventually you have a completely well-defined artistic statue that will stand the test of time. But if you're just going to launch something that hasn't been tested, that doesn't have an audience or no market appeal, grand opening, grand audience, um, you know, grand closing. Yeah. So obviously, if you're going to be launching a business, um, you know, any new business, I know it's, it's undeniably stressful, but doing it proper and doing your due, due diligence behind the scenes, you build up the excitement that's needed for months to come. And you will start experiencing a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And if you are in Australia, your clients are actually waiting on the Australian Business Online Directory. We're only three weeks in. We already have 4,500 members that are, have full profiles on there. So basically, we're creating something that when you want to find online businesses, it's going to be easy on the, uh, the Australian uh, Business Online Directory. All right. If you haven't picked up a profile yet, just type in the words DIR and I'll send you through a link so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. You know, when you get on the online directory, it will do all the heavy lifting for you because everybody is advertising on the same platform and people are actually coming to search for products because nobody is just going to come onto the directory wondering, you know. Because it's when people have a pain that they actually seek out either on Google or on a specific industrial directory to find out who can best serve them. And it could be your business. So type in the words DIR so that I can send you through a link to the directory. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode and thank you so much for your support. If you watched this video up until the end, you could share it to somebody um, who didn't have a chance to watch this. I would gladly, gladly appreciate that. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.